Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Yes, niggas trying to pick out there. Welcome to our podcast, Noodles, with our special guest here. Well, my apologies, ramen noodles. We're our guest here. I'm the C, the one, the only. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show me. Brooklyn Maddie. Yes, sir. What is our topic today? I'm just here for you. I'm here for you. So, Miss C, um, what do you do here at UPC? Okay, well, last year I started at UPC as a physics teacher. Um, this is my second year teaching physics here. I love science. I love STEM. Not so much the math part, but really the science part. Um, and fun fact about me: before I took physics, I took chemistry. So I like all of those sciences. So yeah. Um, what like led you to like become so influenced in like science? I always liked science since I was younger. Um, I did go to common throughout like my middle school, high school career. So I hate math. Couldn't get right with it. It wasn't my thing. But anytime I was in science class, it was easy for me. Like it was very understood. I didn't have to go and study a lot because it was already in my brain. Like it's just something that I was naturally good at. And then when I got to high school, I did AP bio and chemistry and all those things, and I liked it. So I went to college. I did science. I liked it there. And then I came and I taught science. And I liked it. So so funny. My mom's a teacher of like 30 years. And when I was growing up, she always used to look so miserable. Like, I'm never doing this. I'm not worrying about arguing with people at my job every day or just having long days, short nights, and things like that. I was going to be a lawyer. Like, literally, going to be a lawyer. I was going to go to law school. I was going to be like a district attorney. Like, I was determined. And then something happened when I got to college, and I took like chemistry 235 or something like that. And I was just like, yeah, this is me, this is where I need to be. So I decided to do science. And then when I graduated, my old principal from high school actually gave me my first teaching job as a chemistry teacher for 10th grade. So that's where I started at, and that's how I ended up here. So this like teaching just like running your family? Apparently it does. So funny, my sister's also a teacher, and she teaches art to younger kids in like Manhattan. So cute, so nice. None so of us demure. thought we were gonna be very demure. Um, none of us thought we were gonna be teachers because, like I said, my mom was a teacher when I was growing up, so it was like we had to be good at school and all of those things. I used to play school like at home, like print papers, and do now, make my sister sit through a lesson for fun, and then now I realize that those practices is why I'm so good at teaching and why I love it so much. So that's why I'm here. I guess if you can teach your sister, you can teach anybody, right? That's true. That's very true. Something I learned, and I try to tell all my students, like, if you're ever struggling on a concept, and you can get the, the grasp of it, and then you can explain it to another person, and they understand it in the same way that you do, then you get it. And you learn something. You master that. If you can get someone to understand the key components of a concept that's very complex or difficult, for a person that's never, ever seen a material before, and they get it, on a realistic basis, and you guys master that concept. There's not anything about that concept that you don't know. So try doing that. When you're struggling with something, try explaining it out loud to somebody else that's never heard it before and say if it makes sense to them. Because if it makes sense to them, then you know that you know it. Like other than like the like science category, is there like to teach any other like any other subject other than like chemistry or any science? Mm -hmm. It definitely would never be that, I'll tell you that. I would never teach any algebra, any calculus. I probably would do history. Like US history though. World history is too too broad, it's too much information. Um, but US history, I lived here all my life. I pretty much know everything about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and all of those like presidents that matter, that are on the money and all those things. So I feel like it's gonna be easy. I feel like I'm buddy in the classroom, so even if it's not science, history will be fun to me. Here's one fun fact about George Washington we might not know. One fun fact about George Washington you might not know. Yeah. George Washington was a slave owner. Oh. Oh, you know that? Okay. Um, 
I mean, what else did he know about George Washington? He won only two battles in the entire Revolutionary War. Oh, two. Okay, he ran for eight um, and he, Look at you guys teaching me something. You guys and he relinquished, relinquished power when no one thought they could make him king. And he said, nope, I'm going to give... Oh, I'm going to give the presidency okay, back to the people. Yeah. That was like five, like, what, last one? Yeah. I don't know nothing about that. I would have been a bad history to see. No, no, you just yeah. keep learning every day. That's why it's Here, hold this in. Wait, so like, all right, so like outside of school, like, what are your hobbies? Like, what, like, what do you do for like fun? Like, what's, what's... Um, so I watch some basketball. I, I like college basketball a lot. I don't really like... Not to say I'm like the NBA or WNBA, but I just feel like there's so much more talent. Like in the NBA, you know everybody's nice. You know what everyone's what everyone's capable of doing because you know the type of player that they are. But when rookies are coming up and players you've never seen, they just hoop it. It's just like it's fire. I'm watching that, and then you get to see them over the course of the years playing, and then if they go to the draft, you get to see how far they came along and stuff like that. Newly to me, football. I never was really a football fan. I could never understand the game. I didn't understand the, the field, what first down or anything like that meant. Up until I started really, really watching it with my best friend. He really loves football. And now, I'm going to a football game in the summer. I watch the Giants play. It's always going to be cool. Did you play any in school? I played uh, basketball growing up. I uh, played basketball in college for a little while. Um, I tried volleyball. I was not successful at volleyball. When I had a volleyball game in college, the other the, the, the girls from the other team were practicing on the other side of the gym, and they hit the ball so fast they hit me square in the face. I had a concussion. Right, right from there. Like, I, and I never picked up a volleyball after that. I was just like, yeah, no, I'm good. Track. No, I was never fast enough. I tried in high school, but people were always fast me. So when I started, I started playing basketball when I was in fifth grade, right? I was not gonna lie, I was a little bigger. So I played the full five, because I was the biggest on the team. So either the center or the power forward. Then as I got older, like you AAU went through middle school and high school and stuff like that, I slimmed down and I started able to make my shots from like the free throw range and stuff like that. So then I'll move to the two. I don't have the handles, you know, point guard. Not like that. But I can shoot. Full fact. So I became a shooting guard and then I stayed with that. I could still play the four five, but the problem in that in college is that these girls are so large. I'm tall to you guys, but to other athletes that have been playing ball their whole life, they're already tall. I'm the shortest out of most people. Unless you play like a point guard that's like five, six, five, seven. The normal stuff. You see a shooting guard, they're like 5'10", 5'11", you think that's tall, but then you got centers that are like 6'2", 6'3", and you're like, damn. I'm not getting up there with them. So to put me in the paint with someone that's 6'3", is just not going to work because they're always going to be over me. They're bigger than me. Unless you got hops. Unless you got hops. But who wants to be hopping all the time in the paint? You don't want three second violation. You don't want all those things. So. Wait, but how tall are you? 5'11". 5'10 and a half, 5'11". You ever thought about coaching? I don't have patience. Patience is a virtue that I learned from teaching, something that I didn't have. Maybe if I did coach, it would have been something that I love, so I would have learned patience as I went through it. But I'm so I'm too competitive. Like I get mad when I lose. Like that's not a spirit that you bring as a coach because you have to be able to see the positiveness even when like if you lose a game or something bad has happened, you have to still be able to pull out the good things about it. And I don't think I would be in a position to do that because I would be so mad. I don't want to be that type of person. I'm already like that as a teacher. Like when I when I'm trying to teach something and I feel like the kids don't get it, I get frustrated. But then I have to dial it back a little bit and realize that what makes sense to me might not make sense to them. So now I have to find another way to work. I have to find another way to make it make sense. Tie it back to real life. What real life interactions have you had with this concept? Like free fall. We talk about free fall. You got to be on a roller coaster, you know what it feels like to go down. You know what it feels like for your organs to come up. You know that's the normal force acting on you. Like, you learn all of these things and you apply it to real life. What does it mean if I can't apply it to real life? Nothing. 
Missy, what are we learning about this for? I've never seen Y equals MX plus B in real life. What am I going to use that for? You know, type, type stuff like that. So I always try to just tie everything back to real life. For those of you who take my class, you know, physics is everything. It's in everything that we do. Things that you didn't know was physics or had a physics concept behind it has a physics concept behind it. So always, always, always tie things to life. Um, what advice would you give to a, a senior who's about to graduate? To go to college? Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think about what I would want someone to have told me when I was going to college. As cliche as it sounds, to just have someone be real with you and tell you that college is hard. Like, College sounds fun, you know, you get away from home, you get to be free, you're not under your parents' rule, you know, you go away to school and stuff like that. But having to really discipline yourself, like, okay, I have to go to sleep at this time because I know I have an early class this day. But I know I don't have my mom telling me, yo, make sure you get to sleep at this time. I don't have no one calling you to wake me up to make sure I'm up at this time. Like, finding that discipline on your own is the hardest thing. I wish I would have had someone to tell me, college is hard. It is not a walk in the park. It is not something that is not going to challenge you. It is not something that's not going to be difficult. It is something that is going to challenge you every way, shape, form, and fashion. And how you respond to that is what's going to, what's going to get you the skills you need to be successful in life. So like, for example, at UPC you guys get planners, right? This year we've tried to reinforce the idea that every class period you write down what assignment it is that you have to do for the next day. A lot of you guys choose not to write it down, whether you lose your planner, you decide to leave your plan at home or whatever the reason is. When you get to college, you know how hard it's going to be when you have five to six classes a week, long assignments with different due dates, and you're trying to figure out when is what and what time you have to do what. That's what the plan is for. When you practice something for a long period of time, it becomes a habit. You have to do something 21 times for it to become a habit. You using your planner every day throughout the year is building a habit for when you go to college, you know the only way to best organize your time and space is using a planner. You know that if you are struggling with a topic and you can't get it right in class, office hours is a thing that you can go to in high school, just like it is in college. So you discipline yourself to know, I need help. It's not going to be okay for me to just sit here and act like I know it because no one's going to come help me. No one's going to come ask me, yo, you get this? Is there anything else I can help you with? No. Your, your college professor is going to assume that you know that. So as a disciplined individual who's been dealing with office hours and stuff like that, you know, I, I need help with this. I'm going to schedule to meet with him on this day so we can go over this topic and I can get one-on-one -on -one help. Those things and those skills go a long way. You guys don't think it does, but when you go to college, you realize you'll be way far off, better than a lot of your peers. Seymour, you ain't asking me no questions. What's going on here? You did. We can ask me one. Hey, um, what is one thing you think every teenager should know? Like, the most? What is one thing I think every teenager should know? I think it's okay to make mistakes. Like what Max said, it's okay to make mistakes because when you make mistakes, you learn from them, right? I know a lot of us have parents that are like perfectionists, or we go away inside of a school system where perfection is, is the expectation. And sometimes you may feel like you don't have the space to make a mistake, or you don't have the space to be wrong because you're ridiculed for it. But I think that that's what makes us stronger people. Like the fact that we're able to be ridiculed by society on, a, on something that we may have done wrong, learn from it, identify what it is we need to do to be right, and then fixing that situation using what we learned so you never make that mistake again. I think that's what you learn in life. Like That's what life is about, learning and making better decisions for your future. Like, yes, you guys are teenagers, and yes, you guys know right from wrong, but like, you guys are sponges, and you guys are emotional, and like, you guys have bad days, you know? You sleep, you don't get enough sleep, you come to school, you're aggy, or you got into an argument with your sister or your brother in the morning and you come to school, you're not having a good day. Like, we're all human, we all go through things. We may make mistakes in how we interact with people, we may make mistakes in like our work because our brain is not in the right place, but you always learn from those at the end of the day. Never be afraid to make a mistake because there's always something positive that's gonna come out of that mistake. Mm -hmm. 
that would be my advice. Mm -hmm. So like, um, what's one thing you change about now? Huh. Principle. If you could. So, I went to Uncommon all my life. That's so funny. The comment has changed a lot, actually, from when I was in school to, to when you guys are in school now. What's one thing I would change? The one thing that I would change, they changed already. The demerit system. Yeah, that demerit system was not it. Um, I feel like demerits are very derogatory and make people feel very negative about themselves. And like I said about making mistakes, we make mistakes and we get accounted for those mistakes by giving demerits. And then you feel like everything you do is wrong. I don't feel like that was the right thing to do to teach people right and wrong, so I'm happy that they got rid of that. If I were to think right right now at UPC, the only thing I probably would get rid of is like the strict uniform like guidelines, only because a lot of ISS and OSS suspensions come from uniform infractions, like lush attention and all of those things. And that just takes away from class time, it takes away from extracurricular time, mm -hmm. it takes away from stuff where we grow as people. And I just feel like if you focus on what I'm wearing instead of focusing on my education, then you got the wrong priority. When I was in high school, I got suspended for wearing white socks. Huh? What? For real. Like, your socks had to be black, they had to match, it couldn't be. I'm sitting in D's office for socks, so you mean to tell me my socks is more important than me learning today? So, if I had to change anything, I would not to say that we shouldn't wear uniform because uniform makes sense for everyone. But just being able to express yourself some way, shape, form, or fashion with some type of difference, I think would be cool. It would make me more want to come to school. Like, I got something to talk about with my friends. We don't all look the same. We don't got the same belt. We don't got the same sneakers. Like, it's something to talk about. Oh, I like those. Where'd you get those from? How could I get those? Like, let's talk about it. Because during COVID, they allowed them to wear different kinds of sneakers, right? That's nice. Uniform. Yeah, Never had that. Maybe before you got here, but they let them all wear whatever they wanted. And then wear. something changed, and now we're back to all black. Yes. You know where that color. comes from? That was to come from Yeah, it comes from it comes from the network. There's nothing we can do about that, but you know, there's a rationale behind everything that they do. So. So you know, there used to be dress shoes. Now at least it's up there. Now I can't, I can't even wear sneakers. I'm suspended. They use they have dress shoes and ties. Yeah. You just have to wear a tie. I, never, I was never a part of the tie experience. I'm glad I passed that. I left before the tie experience came into play. Wait, it was a pain in the neck. What's like the worst, like the worst policy you got? Like other than like the sock one, was it like the socks one that you got in trouble for? The worst, okay. The worst policy that I that I, I can say in hate is a strong word, but I hated the most was the fact that you could do something out of school way far away. Somehow, somewhere when I come to school the next day, I'm suspended. So no, we're cool. I'll give you one. Like I had this fight one time, right? And what? I with this girl. You won. I got jumped, so okay. I don't know what to call it, but I had this fight, and the girl used to go to my school, but she had transferred to a, to a public school. We fought or whatever after school, left, this is old in Brownsville, I went to UCC, UCC's in bed style. Okay. They had a fight, I come to school the next day, they calling me in the dean's office, like, yeah, Sherat, you need to come here, you need to sit here, you need to take your statement because we, we heard about such and such and such and such. And I'm like, wow. They're like, you're, you're going to have to serve a 10 day OSO. Days. For a fight with somebody that don't go here, for a fight that didn't have no school grounds. But like, I think just monitoring my outside life that has nothing to do with my academics, I hate it the most. Like, how did you know about that? You watching my social media? Some, there's some type of opting going on here that I'm not, I'm not jacking at. So, that's why I didn't like that. Like, I couldn't live my regular life outside because they were always watching. Like, anything you do, you get, you get suspended for it. Like, it was too much intertwining of personal and academic life that I did. Like, so, like, since you're working on, you know what I'm saying, how, like, how do you like, balance your personal life with your work? And, like, like your work? Work hard now, rest later. So, I spent a lot of time after school preparing, internalizing lessons, making student handouts. Making those pages, exemplar on those pages, so you guys are writing it exemplary. It takes time, but the more that you do it beforehand, the more prepared you are. And I think that's what makes our classes go better. So you guys notice when my classes are more smooth, it's because that's the most prepared that I am. Like I've been about this lesson five or six times. I know where, where there are going to be gaps. I know where kids are not going to understand. I know what I can address at this point in the lesson. 
those were my best times, and I feel like, man, I used to stay here until like 8 o'clock. Facts. In the beginning of the year, to make sure I had everything 8 p.m. It used to be me and principal, the last people in the building. Until I had everything right. I'm about, I'm not taking my laptop home, I'm not doing none of that. So anything I needed to do school related needed to happen here. And once I got disciplined with that, it just started happening faster. Now I leave here before 6 p.m. Like how y'all got sports and stuff. You know, y'all be here late. And then when I go home, I'm watching my shows, I'm chilling. I don't have to worry about work. I can unwind, I can detach, and I don't have to think about it until I wake up the next morning. That's how I balance life. Work hard now, rest later. Best thing you do. I'm like, what time do you get here for? Sometimes before 7, sometimes right before 7.15, sometimes I'm a little late, I don't know. Sometimes I have my day when I'm tired. I need 5 or 10 extra minutes. You drive. I do drive. So, we're going to have this conversation in the podcast. What do you mean Um, okay, so. I drive. I do drive. I drive a Mercedes Benz. It's great. It's tinted. Um, it's great, chrome is 5% tint, can see it. Um, oh. I would say that is my proudest, proudest, proudest Can I drive it? Moment. No, you cannot drive it. Only I can drive it. My insurance only covers me. <laughs> um, and me. Only me, just me. Me. But um, it's so funny because everybody always say, oh my God, your car's so nice. And, uh, but boy, when I tell you, people ask me, please don't buy that kind of car. I had two of them. So the first one I had was a white one, and then some evil, evil little girl was just evil and just totaled my car. So that was that. And then I got a new car, and I would say the maintenance is very, very high. So money-wise, it's expensive, mm-hmm. and it's just not sustainable to live in New York because New York is already expensive as it is. So like, if I'm paying my rent is like thirteen hundred, I'm still paying a lot on my car too. Car no car insurance, all of that. So that's just a lot of money. I would say, do your research on cars before you buy a car. I was fiending in Russian, trying to be fancy, like I had money, thought I was doing something, and now I'm facing the consequences of it because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. So the car's nice. It's beautiful, it's cool. People look at it, oh my God, it's a desert, but deep down inside, like, it kills my pockets. It kills my pockets, and it was not something, it's always something else. A tire pops. I got a nail in the tire, I got to replace the tire, plug the tire, I ran out of gas. You always got to have money in your pocket for these type of things. And how we live in New York is expensive. You don't always got money in your pocket. So, some days I'll be at work, I choose not to buy lunch that week. Because I know I got to take something, take care of something off my car. It's a sacrifice. Do your research. Don't buy nice cars just because they look nice. It's always an expensive concept. Don't be like Missy. Be better than Missy. Buy Honda. Buy a Toyota Camry. <laughs> Buy something affordable, something reliable, and something that will last long. Something that has longevity. That's my advice. Call your advice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to college soon. So when you become like sophomores, I know a lot of colleges don't allow freshmen to have cars. But a lot of you guys will probably get your license and your permit and all that soon. And then when you go to college, you'll probably practice driving. Don't be the kid on campus with the Benz and the Beamer. <laughs> All your money is going to go to that Benz or Beamer. You want to be able to live that college kid life. My first school will be a Hellcat. It's going to be a what? Hellcat. 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 See, he's not listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be out of this house and I was like, why? It's not even about buying it. It's maintenance, love. I'll give you one better. I had a car accident. And when I get a car accident, my insurance company comes my rental. So, they covered me for a Challenger, a Hemi, a Hemi Challenger. I was putting $20 of gas in that every day. Just to get from here, from work to my house, it's 10 minutes. Every day, there and back. Gas doesn't look, not worth it. What you want to buy? A Hellcat. A Hellcat's engine is 4,000 more horsepower than a regular engine. Which means the gas, you're going to need it. supreme gas, you're going to need 93 gas. 93 gas is $5 a gallon. Regular gas is three fifty a gallon. Or less now. Or less now. Maxi, first of all, you couldn't get insurance. 
They would not insure oh, you. Oh my God. Oh damn. They wouldn't insure you, and if they did, you it got would to, be high. It'd be high. Do you know in New York City for a car like that, or in is about probably about twelve thousand dollars a year, maybe mm -hmm. more. In insurance. And, yeah. yeah. In insurance. That's and that's only insurance. That doesn't have to do with car note, what you owe the dealership, nothing. Like oh. <laughs> my premium for my insurance before I changed it. I've been driving for a while now. But when I first got my car, I was twenty one. My insurance was twelve hundred dollars a month. And that was just the insurance. That's not my car note. My car note was a thousand dollars. That's not. That's all of that together. I'm paying three thousand dollars a month. That's insane. I'm not doing that. So I got my insurance down to like six hundred. My car note stayed the same. So instead of paying three thousand, no, I cut it down by fifteen hundred. But six hundred is still a lot of money. Do your research on these cars. These expensive cars. Not worth it. That's how No. Don't be like me, don't be like Maxi, one of the Hellcat. But it's not me, it's a, it's a bet I do with my own. He's gonna buy your Hellcat? He said if I, if, if I get good grades and I go to college with good that. grades, I get that car. And I choose that car. He said okay. Sound good for now. Hey, you buy I'm that top of me, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that. He's a man of his word too, so I trust him. He'll probably get it for you, but maintaining it is what's gonna cost more. You get you. Does it come in a matchbox model? Maybe he'll get you one out. The facts, maybe we'll get you the little collect items. Hot wheels. Hot wheels. Hot wheels. Hot wheels. The little miniatures. Those cars are dangerous too. You gotta know how to drive these kind of cars. You spin a corner too fast, you go in a circle, like it's a lot of attraction. Physics. Physics. It's physics, yeah, but it's a lot more to drive it than friction. And motor. Look at y'all. Fruits of my labor. <laughs> it's physics. Do, do you, uh, just a, a, a question about physics, since you're talking about it. Do you think? Um, do you think, in some ways, that you're what they call a unicorn because you teach physics and you're a woman, or is it changing? Do you think? I don't understand the unicorn. Well, unicorn means like you're. It's unusual for women to teach. Was unusual for women That's to true. get degrees in physics or chemistry That's or any of the STEM. And I'm kind of thinking, in your opinion, has that started to change? I feel like there's a lot of women in STEM now. Before, it was a stigma that it only it was only for men because men were smarter and men could withstand more hard work and longer days at work and all of those things. But I feel like we put in the same amount of work. I go to college for the same amount of time. I do the same amount of research. I have the same ability as a man to do the same amount of work as a man as long as I put in the work to do that work. It's no difference in gender. Like teaching at Charter has taught me that there's a lot of black women in STEM. There's a lot of other black women who study science and math in college and are not just know it but are good at putting it forward to the kids. So it's one thing knowing the subject. It's another thing of being able to teach that subject and make it make sense to people who have never heard it before. Yeah. There's two skills in one. Knowing the concept and being able to put forward the concepts. It's two completely different things. They intertwine, but you have to be able to do both to be a successful teacher. That is what makes all of the black women in STEM and all women very successful. Because we not only know the content, but you guys know it because we know it. And that's what's the most important part of this. You guys ain't know nothing yeah. about physics yeah. before y'all came in the seat. Yeah. These are my seniors. Not to say you didn't know, but they can, they can tell you about physics and they don't even take physics no more. Y'all never gonna forget negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Ever, ever, ever in life. Y'all never forgot it. Well, especially if you're gonna drive a health test. Especially if you wanna drive that. Okay, you're gonna need to know to slow down when you're turning the corners because of the friction that interacts with the tires on the ground. And actually, you know we talked about this. You're gonna need to be careful driving that Hellcat. <laughs> you say that. Cars is it gets nelly with cars, I'm telling you. Alright, we're about to wrap up. Alright, let's thank our guests. Hey. Thank you.